Hello, my friends, and thank you. Thank you for joining me today for our devotion. As we spend these moments with our Good Shepherd, Paul is issuing a warning for us today, a, a dire warning, if you will. It's found in Philippians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Beware of the dogs. Beware of the evildoers. Beware of the mutilation, for we are the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who are confident in Christ Jesus, and who place no confidence in the flesh. Now comes a warning about the menace of external religion. This seems to be a rather abrupt change of subject, but there is a very vital connection with the previous verse about rejoicing. What is it that destroys rejoicing in the Lord? It's looking away from the crucified Lord to outward events or rituals and counting them as the important thing. That will inevitably destroy a spirit of rejoicing because it takes our eyes off the joy of what God has done for us and puts the burden of salvation back on us. And we always fall short. So he warns against certain false teachers who, are, who were posing as Christians, who went about trying to get people's faith centered on outward things. The terms he uses to describe these men are blunt, because in matters of this importance, the apostle never minces words. The term dogs is a term of reproach used by both Jew and Gentile. Dogs were regarded as unclean animals because they fed on the garbage disposed of on the streets. We usually call them Judaizers. They were men who taught it was necessary to observe the law of Moses and the food restrictions of the Mosaic Covenant, and especially to be circumcised in order to be a real Christian. They taught that the outward practices made them acceptable to God. Paul doesn't refer to them as teachers of circumcision. He uses a word that in the King James Version is called concision. It's a play on words. What he means is that they are mere flesh cutters, making marks in the flesh that have no meaning at all. Now all this kind of teaching has a strong appeal to our human thinking because of its apparent show of devotion. Now all of this kind of teaching has a strong appeal to our human thinking because of its apparent show of devotion. But again, this takes our eyes off the complete victory of Christ, which he's given to us, and focuses us on our incomplete acts of obedience. Instead of rejoicing in what God has freely given us, we begin to labor under the notion, have I done enough to earn God's favor? Instead, our works of obedience are not to earn God's favor, but to thank him for his favor. They don't earn our salvation. They praise him for the salvation he has won for us. Look to the cross. Hear Jesus' words, it is finished. See the empty grave. Your salvation is sure. We pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for my salvation. May I never be led to look to myself as adding anything to your victory, which you have graciously given to me. Amen. Well, everyone, remember, your salvation is sure. Don't let anybody put you under the weight of trying to earn it.